Hello, this is Mr. Buffington from Simplify Academy, and today we are looking at grouping symbols. We will talk about grouping symbols, solve some expressions with grouping symbols, and as always have practice that you can do as well. The basic grouping symbols that we'll be using inside of this course are parentheses, brackets, and braces. And I'm going to show you a sample question where we use all three. This is more complicated than anything you will need to solve, but I'm just trying to show you an example of how these work. Here is a word phrase that kind of puts things in order. Essentially what you're looking at is braces, brackets, and parentheses. The parentheses are inside of the brackets that are inside of the braces. So just like you would actually the opposite of, of an onion, we're going to start in the center and work our way out, um, peeling off layers as we go. So the very first thing you'll do is inside of inside of inside, you see there it says first, that's inside the parentheses. Then we would go second and simplify what's in the brackets. Third, we would simplify anything inside of the braces. And then at the end, we would add or subtract or whatever, multiply, divide, whatever is kind of outside of those braces. Let's take a look at this expression. Four times, um, and then you have the braces, two plus, then the brackets, five times, and then the parentheses, three minus one. We'll begin by looking at the innermost part here and simply subtracting. 3 minus 1 gives us 2. Notice everything else stays the same. That is a common theme. We're going to write down every step and leave everything else the same, change one thing at a time. Now that we've simplified what was inside the parentheses, we can get rid of those parentheses and we're left with um, just braces and brackets. Now we, we will go second. The second thing we'll solve is what's inside the brackets, five times two, which gives us 10. Again, everything else remains the same. Now we're going to add two plus 10, which gives us 12. And then our final step, we're multiplying four times 12, which gives us 48. That's a sample question. Again, more complex than anything I'll expect you to do, but just to show you how grouping symbols work. They basically tell you what's going to get done first. Also, Grouping symbols are part of the order of operations, so we will have to simplify following the order of operations with all questions. Let's do a quick recap of evaluating an expression that has just subtraction and addition, and then I'll show you how grouping symbols can change things. With this one, we would have 9 minus 3 plus 1. We would start out by doing 9 minus 3, which is 6, and then 6 plus 1 is 7. Now with those same exact numbers, we can put a set of grouping symbols in that will change the answer. Now we're going to add first three plus one, which gives us four, and then subtract. Nine minus four gives us five. In our third example, you see here, nine minus three is inside of the grouping symbols, and that actually won't change anything from the original question. That's because those grouping symbols were unnecessary. They were telling us to do what we were already going to do first. Sometimes I like to write in grouping symbols that are unnecessary if it helps to clarify what exactly I'm trying to do. I did that in the writing expressions lesson quite often, but with this one, if they're unnecessary, we'll usually just not write them in. Now we're going to look at what's first. It's important when we're doing order of operations that we can identify what is my first step. So inside of these grouping symbols, what would be my first step? 12 minus the quantity of three plus seven. In this case, I would be first adding three plus seven. That's what's inside the parentheses. That's what I'm going to do first. And that one might've seemed pretty easy, but when they get more complex like this with the brackets, you can try and figure that one out. Go ahead and take a look at that and try and figure out what would I do first. If that's looking really complicated to you, then you're a normal person because it's kind of a complicated question. What you can do to make your life easier is start covering up the outer layers. 
We know the outer layers get done last, so just cover them up. Now I've got this 5 times 3 plus 1. Well, that looks a lot like what I just did, but I can cover up even more to kind of work my way into the center. That's the step that I'm going to do first, 3 plus 1. Now it's time to practice. This exercise that we're going to do will help you become more comfortable with the parentheses and actually have you use them to make math expressions correct. Remember order of operations, we are going to plug in some grouping symbols. Let's start off with this example and I'll explain this example and, and then we'll work on some, some practice for you, that you can work on. So this question is incorrect the way that it is. 10 minus 4 divided by 2, we would we normally would first divide 4 divided by 2 is 2 and then, um, then do the subtraction. In this question, we've kind of done it in a backwards order. We did the 10 minus 4 first. So to make it correct, we would have to add grouping symbols right here. Now this is correct. 10 minus 4 is 6 and 6 divided by 2 is equal to 3. That's how we solve this question. So in a similar way, I'm going to give expressions and maybe a result like this and say, where would the grouping symbols go so that you can get the answer of 3? So take a look at that. There's only two places you could put grouping symbols, one around the 12 and the 4 or two around the 4 and the 5. Which one, where would you put them so that you would get this correct? For me, I look at this and say, I need to do 12 minus 9 to get 3. So that means my grouping symbols need to go here. 4 plus 5 is 9. Then I do 12 minus 9, which gives me 3. This changed the order that I did the operations because I would normally have subtracted 12 minus 4 first, but the grouping symbols tell me first do the 4 plus 5. Here's another one, um, 8 minus 3 times 1. I want you to think about where grouping symbols would go with that. Again, what I do is I look at it and say, what's the next step? Well, the next step would be 8 minus 3. So the first thing I did was 3 times 1, which is actually completely unnecessary. You don't need to have those grouping symbols there. That's the correct order without the grouping symbols because 3 times 1 is multiplication and that would come first. So sometimes you don't need to add grouping symbols to get your answer correct. I hope this has been a little bit um, interesting for us. I. I like this exercise because it helps us to think about what grouping symbols do. They are supposed to change the order of operations so that you can get an answer that you wouldn't normally get. Now what we're, we're going to do is actually solve some questions. We're going to solve using the order of operations. Remember um, our steps there. Go ahead and pause the video. Try this one out on your own and then come back to the recording to see the answer. Hey, welcome back. 24 divided by the quantity of four plus, 2 plus 4 times 8. We'll first solve what's inside the parentheses. 2 plus 4 is 6. Everything else stays the same. Now we're going to do division. 24 divided by 6 gives us 4 and 4 times 8 is 32. This one is a great example of order of operations when we have grouping symbols. Here's one that's more complex, probably the most complicated thing I will ask you to do, but I want you to try it out because I think if you can do this, you can do anything else with grouping symbols and operations because this has all four, actually has four different operations, well, additions in there twice, but it has four operations um, that you need to solve and two sets of, of grouping symbols. This one here is definitely complex. Pause the video, try it out. All right, very first step. Inside the parentheses that are inside the brackets, you have that 6 divided by 3 plus 4. 6 divided by 3 will get done first because division gets done before addition. Then we'll add 2 plus 4 to get 6. 
Now we're going to simplify what's inside the bracket. 7 plus 6 gives us 13. Then we would multiply to get our answer of 104. This is a complicated question. It is more complicated than the questions that will be on the worksheet or the quiz. I just wanted to push you a little bit and maybe some of those people who really like being challenged. This is a super challenge question. I won't expect this of you. Sixth grade standards don't expect this of you. I just wanted to push you a little bit farther with the grouping symbols and the operations. So if that one was a little bit frustrating or, or confusing, you're not going to need to know that till later, but I'm just preparing you for what you're going to see in seventh grade and moving on. A couple things to remember, you need to do the order of operations, focus on what comes first and show your work. Every step that is shown is a step that you can trace backwards. I hope that video was helpful for you. Good luck on the worksheet and the quiz. Have a wonderful day.